I think we're good to go ahead and start. All right, so we've got the previous minutes link here. Does anyone have any objections to them that we need to adjust for? I don't think we actually have to vote on the meeting minutes. All righty. Troy, you said you were kind of double booked. Are you good to talk about the new SIG proposal or do you want to skip it for now? Uh, can we skip it for now? Yes. Need about five, 10 minutes. Yep, not a problem. So we will come back to the new SIG proposal and we will start with the review of the virtual dojo that was held on June 17th. Sean, do you want to talk about that? Um, sure. What? Um... I guess I, I could have pulled up stats on that. Would have been useful. I don't have them right in front of me. Uh, I think it went really well, though. Um, yeah. Uh, we had a, a fairly good attendance, and uh, people were always uh, there. Was engaged engaged people in the hallway track and everything. So um, I don't have much else. I have to figure out how to log back into Hopkins to okay. get statistics out. But, I think it might um, have been a little smaller just because we didn't really announce it that far in advance. But well, you're right, it, was, it had it was, really good attendance mm -hmm. for the amount of time we had and people were really active. Yeah, and I think the, the FASDEM one just draws more people, even though it was virtual, uh, still being kind of attached to FASDEM felt like it just got, uh, I don't know, more promotion channels basically. Um, so yeah, I think it didn't have quite the attendance that the Fosdem one did. Should we plan for another virtual dojo near the end of the year? Um, yeah. I think we did <clears> one <throat> in October last year, if I remember right. Uh, there was an October one last year. Yeah, so maybe October and November or something around that. Like definitely before Thanksgiving, but beyond that, whatever works for folks. Okay. We will put a doodle up for, yeah, we can use doodle still for dates and see when folks are interested. Um, I know end of October, beginning of November, I'm hoping to go away for a week or so. But. Um, oh, I reached my CubeCon is the last week of October. So, yeah, maybe like about that, the week right before. before. That. One, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because it doesn't make sense to do December because a lot of people will be out, and then we're yeah. hopefully going to be close to Fosdom. Yeah. And DevCon CZ. So. And I, do, do do we know if Fosdom is in person again or? I do not know. Let me ask okay. Google. Also, if DevCon CZ is happening in person this year. Right. I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen any announcement for either of those. No, I don't not think, yet. I don't think DevCon CZ is uh, an in-person event. I think it's hybrid. Um, so that hybrid meaning like the locals are in person, but remote attendees is um, from other countries are probably. Oh, okay. I, I, I'd like to point out briefly, and Sean should check with his colleague Dorf on this, but the DEFCOM CZ site is advertising a June date. And I have Ooh. heard some rumblings that there will no longer be a winter um, edition. Yeah. But uh, Sean can probably get faster information on this for the board's uh, planning purposes. That was my understanding as well. I, I wasn't sure if that had been uh, publicly communicated yet, that they were looking at switching to summer. Um, okay. And if that's the case, I think uh, it, it's worth looking at uh, whether that's a um, whether that's a, a good location for a um, for a dojo. The, they have a big green button on the site that says "mini local in person event," so I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, they've got like these mini events, and then I think they're still trying to think of like the big major event. Uh, oh yeah, because that says June second, twenty twenty two. So it it already it was last month. Yeah. yeah. 
that was a mini event, yeah. Yes, so I apologize for not being able to read the years correctly. Um, <laughs> I, the nature of my day job is one where the year is unimportant, and so I tend to forget about it. So I do apologize. I'm like an American who can't date his checks over here. Um, the, the June mini event was, in fact, a very small local in-person event I had the privilege of attending. Um, but we should check with Dorka on final dates because I know she does have a sequence of these minis as well. Um, and I think there's a fedora hatch attached to one. So if we wanted to attach mm -hmm. something for CentOS, that might be possible. Yeah, and if they're doing something with fedora, that would be good if we could um, try to schedule something around there because you know one of the things I think is important is for us to work with our adjoining communities. So that would be a good opportunity for us. Um, That's a good yeah. point. There's also a fedora nest the next month, I believe. Yeah. That one is virtual. EFP for that one's still so open. So if we wanted to do some kind of Santos thing there, we would probably still have time to do that. It's yeah, it's the week. It's basically the week before DevConf, or maybe a little bit. Yeah, so, something so. like that. It's August third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's a little break between them. Yeah. Uh, but having a session or two wouldn't be bad if we have topics to submit. Um, I think the CFP is still open on that. So between now and our next meeting, we'll research whether FOSDEM and DevConf CZ are going to be in person or virtual or hybrid, and also try to get some dates on those so we can make some plans for whether we're going to hold our next dojo in person which I think is our plan after, you know, going back to an in-person cadence, but to try to find a location for it and a timing for it. Yeah, I think there's yeah. value in having both in-person and virtual ones, but I would definitely like to get back to having at least a couple of in-person events a year. Yeah, I think events. we kind of played with the idea. Now, if we added November one, that would be two virtuals and two in-persons a year, which is fine too. Um, last time we kind of discussed it was two in-persons and one virtual. But um, if timing works out, there's nothing holding us back from having two virtuals. So that kind of brings us to our next topic, which is the in-person dojo that's going to be August 17th. Um, and we have the CFP open. Until the 22nd, I believe. Okay. We have so everybody, ahead. please submit uh, and encourage people that you know to submit if they have interesting things, even if they have uninteresting things to talk about. That's that's okay too. Uh, I I put in there for the CFP um, uh, to allow people to do shorter or longer talks. I think you know some some material people don't feel like they have um, uh, enough to talk about. Like they want to show something off, but they don't have enough to, to fill up the time. And why make them fill up time? So if you've just got something you want to kind of show off, um, you know, it's not lightning talks, it's not high pressure lightning talks, but the shorter talk spots. Um, so yeah, definitely um, promote that to anybody doing interesting work. And as soon as Thomas starts, stop his, I'm grabbing this for a second. <laughs> and register that to That is attend. the reservation link. For the hotel. Oh yeah, thank you. I'm gonna put that on the wiki um, today. Sorry, that should be on the wiki. Yeah, we need to get that out everywhere. The yes. hotel price is really, really good, um, but not many people have made reservations yet. Um, in fact, most of them that I have seen were board and Center West related reservations. So um, if you are planning on being there in person, you can't beat this rate for the hotel for the area. And this uh, this link that Amy put into the um, or that, that that's pasted in the minutes here uh, in, includes the extra day. If you were to just book with the, I think the link on the DevConf site, um, it won't let you book a day early to come to Dev. I think to, they uh, actually expanded it for everybody. Did they expand the whole with, thing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rich, Sorry, I'm looking Norman. for the um, link for you. Yeah, I searched through my archives and I didn't find it. 
but I remember seeing the CFP link. I just don't. Oh, also related to Dojo on the 16th, so the day before, we're doing a meetup for Hyperscale, also at BU. Sean was kind enough to find us a meeting space. So if you're interested in attending or hanging out or something, um, that would be a thing. I expect that would be a pretty informal affair, but uh, we will have some form of VC bridge as well in case remote folks want to join. Uh, I will write up an actual announcement of this later today. Um, Sean is saying the Dojo CFP is closed. What? What? Yes, but here I'm putting the link in the chat. Oh, shoot. Ignore that chat window. <laughs> That's the I hotel got the again. Link into the actual minutes. Okay. And there it is um, for the CFP. And it's saying the form CFP is. Oh, yeah. So Joe is no longer accepting responses. Okay. No. That's not going to get us any submissions, is it? <laughs> um, okay. I'm not. Okay. Um, All right, I'm going to open this in a different browser where I'm not logged in as me. Okay. We'll, we'll get that you, fixed in the next hour. Yeah, so. okay. Yes. Seems to work oh, for yeah. me, but all right. Huh. That came off of the blog post in case that matters. Oh, okay. Except for the fact that I can't post copy and paste links. So I click to get there okay, well, from here. Where are you pasting into? I'm sorry, which window am I? I'm trying to get it off the blue. Oh, I'm oh, okay. That's okay. This is important stuff, Rich. We need to get this fixed to know about it. So I clicked off the blog link and then it gives me the closed form. So the dojo will be on the 17th. The board meeting will be on the 20th. Um, Rich, what, not Rich, Sean, what night is the dinner? Um, the dinner has not been scheduled, but I believe we, um, that'd be the, you know, so the, the, the dojo is on the 17th. So the conference is 18th, 19th, 20th. And what the what the what the board had said was the night of the second day, so the the nineteenth would be the dinner. Okay. So that gives us time. You don't want to do it on the twentieth because most people will will leave, uh, and doing it on the nineteenth gives us time to invite people we see at the conference or whatever. If, yep. If want to. So um, I did send. I I sent. I think an email. To the board uh, just before I went on vacation with, I think, a proposed slate of people to send invites to. Yeah, I saw that it looked good to me. Okay, great. Yeah, so if there's no additions or changes, I mean, we can always send add additions to that, but um, we should probably get that list emailed out just so they can make plans. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll email them uh, this evening or tomorrow. Okay. Alrighty, do we have anything else about the dojo? Sorry. Um, just briefly, I wanted to mention that issue number five for the CentOS logo is now closed. So we are going with the round logo with the offset orange middle and arrow. Um, you can see this here. So great work, Alain. 
and all every feedback I've gotten from everywhere is very positive about it. So I'm looking forward. And I know Sean was talking about some t-shirts for the dojo earlier. So we'll actually get to wear our new logo. I, so, I spent excited. quite a bit of time today looking at Red Hat's swag fulfillment catalog thing today. So yeah. Well, let me know. Oh, I can help you. I have not seen these yet. This looks really, really good. Yeah, and if any of the SIGs, I'm assuming that all the SIGs will have access to um, a logo with their name on it. Um, I have not actually gone clicking through the files to look. Um, but so if anybody, any of the SIGs want to make something, that'll be a possibility. And Sean, I can help you with the um, swag stuff because I've been doing it for RDO. Cool. All right, that's the only thing I wanted to mention about that because we finally got that closed. Um, Troy, are you back yet? I can be. Would you like to be or would you like us to oh, move on yes. to the next topic? Uh, let, let's go for it right now. <laughs> okay. Um, what, what do you need from me besides saying that I would like to propose a, I'd like to do a ultimate images SIG? And what else do you need me to say? Um, talk about your vision for it. Okay. Um, so these would be, these would be mainly ice. Well, as far as I, right now, I just have ISOs. Uh, they'd be like live, live CD, we call it, We'll say live images, like uh, live KDE, live GNOME XFCE, uh, as well as some other alternate images. Uh, I personally would like to do a minimum install DVD image. Nobody burns things on CDs and DVDs, but that's just what's in my mind. Uh, I like a minimum install thing, very similar to like Alma has, so that I don't have to download the entire eight gig thing if I want to do a non-network install. Um, in doing this, I would want to in, work with other SIGs, uh, like the Fedora KDE SIGs, I've already talked with them about this, but as well as the CentOS SIGs, the the like the automotive, well, there's a couple that would, would like already have their own images, but uh, but some might want to do their own images. So it wouldn't be just, hey, me and my little SIG are making the images. It would help make it so that uh, the other SIGs can make their own images if they want to. Uh, reading this thread, there definitely seems to be interest from a diff couple different groups and people. Um, so I think you'll have compatriots working on this. Does anyone have any objections or concerns about this SIG? I, I guess I had a, a clarifying question, Troy. Like, is this, um, it seems like the SIG is just tell us what media you want and we'll produce it for you. Is that kind of the goal here? Or it, I, it just seems like a catch all and I'm trying to understand what the focus is. <laughs> no, it's actually not because I, I use, really don't want to do like containers or RAWs or AWS images. For, for me, the, the main goal is people, well, the, there's two main goals. I like live images so that I can uh, show those to other people or some in some points uh, help people recover their machines. So live images and then for ISOs, uh, there is some people that like having their own ISO so that, I'm gonna use the KDE SIG as an example, so that they have Apple enabled, they already have KDE so that they just have one one thing so they don't have to install CentOS Stream and then enable Apple and then install the 
the KDE desktop. They just have one image. I, I'm going to say DVD, even though it's an image. One image that they can run to do their install and have it all set up already for them. Those okay. are the two main goals that I have. So it's really I focused on, on installation media. Correct. Installation okay. and live, but live can also be the installation media. Right. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question and just, I, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious. Um, long ago in the Fedora project, we had uh, an, an initiative kind of like this to allow people to submit um, their own spins. And at the time it was myself and Seth Vidal who would, who would actually go produce these. And it was going fine because we had a lot of interest until uh, a contributor showed up and said they wanted localized installation media for all of the Hindu languages. And then they expanded it to all of the Chinese languages. And then they said, we want all languages. And so, so like, um, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like what would be the cutoff where you say, no, no, that's not something that this SIG is, is interested in producing, but you could do it on your own versus yes, we'll produce an image for that. Sorry, muted. Uh, that's actually a good question. Uh, the one thing that I did put down in this, I think I put it in the not in scope, was size. Uh, I don't, because I, coming from the scientific Linux people, people wanted an everything image, and those just get huge. Yeah. Uh, if somebody is willing to do a setup and do the kickstart for do the the work setting up an image as long as it is not too big uh on my proposal i said four gig that could be smaller that could be bigger but i figured that was a good roundabout size as long as they're willing to do the work to set it up and i'm okay doing it uh okay i i plan on at least semi-automating this in that I would kick off a script that makes images. I want to do it like once a quarter, depending on, for all the images, so we don't have old images just sitting around. Um, but uh, they, there's, if somebody wants one more often than that, they can do, we can do one offs. But as long as somebody's willing to do the work to get me the kickstart, get me the, the scripts that are needed. Sure. I'm, I'm okay. okay with that. All right. That, yeah. It okay. sounds like a good way to kind of solicit contributions. Um, okay. Do you know if there are any concerns on the infrastructure side for storage uh, reasons? Yeah, that uh, that is some, that is something uh, I, we will have to talk about. And that's why I said that size thing might have to adjust. Yeah. My, uh... um, so I think um, so. Uh, speaking from a, from the infrastructure perspective, I think we can, as long as we know uh, sort of what's coming, I think we can make plans for uh, you know both both for the build storage and for the uh, release and distribution storage here. So and we're definitely going to have to have some close collaboration between with uh, between what we do with this SIG and with the. Uh, you know, the media that we produce out of the US itself. So um, uh, it's something that we can pay attention to for sure. I have a side question on this subject as well is, uh, do we plan to impose the building process or do we plan to support many? Because uh, there's kind of like, uh, like known to like Packer and thing like that where people may like to, provide HCLs instead of kickstart or thing like that. So uh, is, is this something that you see in the SIG that we will go with one way of building all this image and keep it consistent or we will as well accept contributions that are going in a different way uh, for, for all the part of the community? Uh, I don't want to do too many, but uh, that is something that we would have to talk about on the, on the SIG. Um, but I would like to go with whatever infrastructure recommends we do. Uh, if we, if there is two or three different ways, 
if infrastructure is okay uh, with us doing them and if it's not too hard, I'm okay with that. But I really don't want to say anybody's all sorts of different ways. Uh, if they start getting, if we get too many different ways, uh, I think we'll have to start reining some in or cutting some things off. Yeah, it kind of sounds like there's two paths here. One is the live CD image where people get a base installation where they can start using it. Um, and then the other one is a more cu customized build that we are going to promote that folks need to provide basically the kickstart file, you know, with whatever else they're going to need in order to build one, but there will need to be the limits. You know, we're not going to take everybody's kickstart. Um, so maybe, you know, five that fit different areas. So maybe something that's a little more scientific, one that's a little more automotive and so on and so forth. So that we're not maintaining, you know, 20 of these things just because somebody wanted it. And I do agree getting these files and, you know, people joining in to get their image is a great way to get new contributors. Just to add a comment. My interpretation. Yeah, just to add a comment, I think it's a great idea uh, because I think it will be needed by the community. I see a lot of, of, of usage and I agree that we need to be clear on what we want to support and how uh what kind of of input uh people can can give but uh yeah uh for me it's a really great idea i mean uh, i would be trying to contribute at, uh, as a, as because we have a lot of we are rebuilding a lot of images so so yeah i think uh, for me it looks uh, a good idea to 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 launch the sig So, so I'm going to jump in because I've had my hand raised. Um, okay, please. And we've got a couple of other folks who have their hands raised as well. I'm not sure if, if, if that's not coming through on some folks' screen because of the way they're connected. Um, um, I, Red Hat doesn't have any problems with this on the face of it. I do want to see the SIG template filled out. Um, I don't see a link to one. Um, so I'd like to make sure that we have that with the answers to a lot of these questions that have been asked. Um, the two questions that I would like to add to that to have an answer on, and they don't need to be answered today, is one, please help me understand, uh, one of the examples was given was an automotive image. Please help me understand why we don't need an infrastructure that the automotive SIG can make a decision about versus this SIG arbitrarily building that. I just want to understand the relationship between this SIG and other SIGs. Um, and then the second is it would be good uh, to have someone explain why something like Image Builder is not useful here, um, or if Image Builder represents a different path to accomplish this that may help us accomplish it in, in a more useful manner or a different manner. Like, again, that's probably partially a technology question, partially an implementation question, and then partially a bunch of other things, which um, I don't do distro building at this level, but I personally don't know. Again, no answer required today, but I'd like to see that the template. Thank you. So three things. First, let's start with the image builder. Uh, I'd like to do image builder. Um, that's something I want to talk to the infrastructure about actually getting into there so, so that we can use image builder for that and then just maybe have it centrally here. Um, so yes, image builder is something I want to do, but that's more working with the infrastructure to get it available. Um, I'm going to try to remember your, your very first question, but the other one, I didn't know there was a template. Uh, I was going off of the, what I thought was the directions. So if I'm missing something, please let me know what it is so I can fill it out. And I can't remember what your first question was. Oh, automotive. Um, why, why would automotive want to join this SIG versus the others? They might not want to. Um, somebody on there said that they would. I, I thought automotive had their own things. Uh, maybe we can work with them on uh, getting infrastructure the way they want it, or maybe they'll help us go uh, build images. Um, at this point, or maybe they'll be like a co-chair on this and they'll, they'll kick off images whenever they want. Um, 
at this point, I don't know how we would work with automotive. And I'll be quiet. All right. I'm going to jump in for a, on yep. the uh, storage front of things, I need to make sure to also inform our mirror network about the uh, creation of a bunch of more install images, just because there are a number of ways in which churn and build on those can be painful for folks who are just sort of naively mirroring. Like, I've got enough space to tolerate an extra terabyte of random stuff. And while I'm not saying that Troy is suggesting we build a terabyte of images, it could expand fairly quickly because there are a bunch of really neat things that could be built here and people need to have space to put it. Um, one of the things that once we get in with the SIG that I've always wanted, uh, I don't want to keep too many images. I mean, I also don't want to just chop off, only keep the latest, um, but we will have to decide how many we keep and storage and like you said mirrors is definitely uh something i want to be uh i don't know what the term is aware of uh or in the back of our mind so that we don't do what you said bombard these mirror mirror people or mirror servers Um, you had your hand up. On my side, I love the idea of doing this in a place where multiple six can collaborate on image building stuff. Like I know this is something we have been looking at in Hyperscale and we have been doing. And I think definitely having more folks collaborate on tooling is helpful there. Um, and I like framing this in terms, I think Rich put it very well in the chat, and like having this framed in terms of like, this is a place where if you want to do this kind of work, you can do this kind of work with us and we can help you. Uh, versus here's what I want to do it for me. I think is a is a useful framing for this for these. Um, in terms of technologies, what I'd say is I think it would be valuable to do this in a way that can be done on the existing CentOS infrastructure. Um, so, uh, like for example, one thing I would like personally to see is being able to build these things on CBS and have them released to the mirror networks through the same pipelines we have currently there in place. That's something in Hyperscale that we struggled with because right now there isn't a good support in CDS for the images we were building. There's a few tickets on infra around this. Um, but I think in general, rather than being prescriptive on the technologies that people should be using, I think being prescriptive about the infrastructure that people should be using might be a good demarcation line to think about here. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Um... And I have to admit, this is one of the times I, I in an IRC meeting and I got distracted halfway through. You you did say that uh, you, you wanted to get things in on into CentOS infrastructure, which I agree and I want to do that. And like I said, I want to collaborate. But I lost the, I lost the last half of what you said and I deeply apologize for that. Oh, no worries. Yeah, um, what I was saying was uh, one thing we have struggled in hyperscale was being able to support the type of images we were building on CBS uh, because there wasn't support for the image builder um, type we were using on CBS. I think because the Koji version is too old or something. Anyway, there's tickets with the technical details. Um, but the larger point was, I think, if we can leverage the common infrastructure and treat the infrastructure as the like demarcation point for what's acceptable and what isn't, instead of being prescriptive on the image building technologies to use, I think that's probably a good a good framing for this. I I definitely agree with that. And I want that is going to be my goal is to have as much as if not everything in the the, the CentOS infrastructure or Fedora. I'm going to say CentOS slash Fedora. I'll be okay if some of it's in the Fedora infrastructure. Uh, but maybe they won't be. Um, if, if we need to go outside of that for one or two things, or, or at least temporary, maybe, but I really want to get things into CentOS infrastructure because uh, otherwise, I, I don't know, then it's, we're pulling in more stuff and somebody else has to maintain it. And yep. it's, it's cool. it just makes more work overall. 
right, so it seems that there's definitely interest in this. Um, next steps will be for Troy to fill out the form. And I do know as part of that form, there will be a board mentor, so to speak. Um, so something to think about if anyone's interested in working with Troy on this, let him know as part of the process for him filling out the form. Is there anything else on this item? All right, Bex, do you want to go ahead and discuss the PR meetings you've been having? Certainly, uh, and uh, Thomas was in the one that happened today, uh, so I, I welcome his color commentary and additions. Um, I contacted the board a while back about the fact that this would be going on, but we wanted to get this minuted in the public board meeting today. Um, the Red Hat team in China had received some information about uh, information that was not completely accurate that was being spread within the Chinese market. And so they wanted to launch some publicity to help the CentOS project and by extension Red Hat clarify some of those issues. And that has resulted in a couple of things uh, where it impacted the community was that today, uh, Thomas and I were part of an interview and I apologize, um, I believe it was Mr. Wong, but I'm not 100% certain that, that was his name, but he is the founder of one of the largest Linux user groups in China. It's a, as I understood it, about a 20 year old organization. Um, and we were interviewed by him and some select members of the media with questions about the transition that the project made when it chose to bring CentOS Stream in, when CentOS Linux was decided to no longer be built and what the future might look like. And these were questions that were asked from the community's perspective. And we were present as members of the board of the CentOS project. There will be an additional conversation next week with an organization, if I'm remembering the four letters correctly, the CSDN. It is a large, I'm going to date myself and call it a webcast, but I think it's a live stream thing of some form. Uh, and it apparently will draw just an obnoxiously large audience. Uh, I believe there's a team of three or four hosts and we will be joined there by a member of the Greater China PR team from Red Hat in case there are Red Hat specific questions. Um, the conversation and the questions I thought were extremely good. Um, candidly, um, I wish that journalists in other countries asked questions as directly and as pointed and as appropriate as the questions that we received today. Um, and they seemed very interested in what we had to say about the project. They um, uh, the primary questioner, Mr. Wong, seemed to very much understand the distinction between project and product, which was fantastic because it allowed us to stay focused on the CentOS project. Um, and one of his comments, not trying to steal all of Thomas's thunder for whatever he chooses to add, one of his very specific comments was he wanted to know what the project was going to do about enabling greater contribution from China. Um, and our response was candidly, we're all in favor of this. Please tell us what to do because I personally have held roles where I have failed in this effort. Um, and he had some very specific suggestions, which we have encouraged a ticket to be filed with the board. Uh, that was Thomas's idea, and I think it's a great one, uh, so that the board can take action as is appropriate around that. And Thomas, I'd, I'd love your, your commentary and input as well, in case I've misrepresented or you wish to extend. No, no, you said everything. I think uh, we we sort of uh, very motivated. Uh, at the same time, the, the always reminded us that there's a language barrier, so that it's hard uh, for for the Chinese people to contribute. And so we try to to explain them. I told them that I I'm not a native English speaker, and that I started uh, with small things, and that uh, after uh, you can do better thing, and they shouldn't stop for for a language problem, and that we will put in place some help if they need. And uh, there were some suggestions that some people studying in UK could help us with that. So uh, we encourage them to attend to to the board meeting as well if they had question. We encourage them to nominate uh, people that could be on the board if they see people that. Uh, did significant contribution uh, to the operating system ecosystem in China. So basically, uh, it was quite interesting. Now, uh, I hope we will get feedback in the next week uh, through tickets or through direct email that uh, we can forward with, with Bex. Let's see. But uh, yeah, they, they were very motivated. And I think um, it, it, it 
could be nice to get more people uh, from this community because this is a huge community and uh, I'm pretty sure they have the same problem as everybody. So we, we should help them and uh, I hope uh, we manage to get a few more contributors uh, thanks to, to, to this event. So do we have any takeaways? It kind of sounds like a blog post, you know, with some of the questions and answers it would be really great if we have access to that. Um, and also possibly some onboarding to, you know, work on getting some of those contributors and helping them get started. Is something else yeah. we could be working on? Um, I'm reacting, go ahead, Thomas. Sorry, I think I think it's uh, just to to follow up exactly that. I think having a list of low hanging fruit uh, tasks we could publish somewhere to to encourage people not on the code side on the documentation because there was concern about the documentation not being uh, complete, especially for example the governance to to not be translated to Chinese. So we well, we thought that was a really good idea. If if someone step up and want to start after, we can help them to to go forward with, with this request and things. So uh, yes, uh, uh, for me, if uh, we have time to build a list of small tasks uh, for or each SIG could provide few tasks that uh, new contributor could help with, it would be super useful. And I think uh, this is something that we try at a point uh, many years ago, and we didn't get enough traction from from people the list never grow enough and it was really hard to contribute to the core thing in the past so i think it's a good it's a good moment to to retry that and to 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 try to have a, a list of uh, of these things um, to that i would add that the um pr team there should forward out press results that occur as a result of this uh, activity and i'll be happy to make sure that those come to the attention of the board and sean so that if we want to do something with that information, we can. I don't know how much press roundup we have normally done. I haven't noticed it being done by the product or project, but um, that's certainly something that we could do in this case. And I would expect that that has uh, a lot of the questions, probably almost verbatim, will be in at least one or two of the articles if uh, Chinese press is still operating the way it was the last time I did this kind of a thing. Um, I have a rough list of questions, which I took as soap notes during the conversation, but I did not note our answers, although I'm sure Thomas and I could easily freestyle those back. Um, and uh, there was a recording made, but I don't know if it was made by Red Hat or if it was made by Mr. Wong or one of the other media, so I don't know if we have access to that. Um, the recording is probably roughly two hours long of which about 50% is Chinese translation because everything was simultaneous or was live translated during the event. Yeah, I would really love to see having, having a place where people can submit easy tasks to get started that don't necessarily have to be like easy, but like, um, like good onboarding tasks, I guess, which tend to be something that is meaningful, but it isn't urgent. Um, that would be really, really valuable. If, for what is worth, um, in my day job, one thing I have been trying to do lately was putting together things like that, uh, that would help people get started in, it, it was within the context of Fedora specifically, not of Santos there, but um, if folks are interested in collaborating, you may be trying to put together a list of areas that, or like a list of ideas that we could use there, I would be down to trying to put something there. Because I think this is something that we really, really valuable for this community. Maybe a good topic for the face-to-face -face, actually next month. Yeah, um, because we do want to get new contributors. And like I put in the chat, this would also be something we can build off of to do like open source day at Grace Hopper and other places where there's opportunities to mentor new contributors, even if they don't stay around, at least we're going to get some contrib contributions and show people that we are accepting contributions from anywhere. And I think right now, part of the reason, you know, we had these meetings is people think it's not open for contributions. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So the more places we can get, you know, that, interaction with people and, and work on our processes for new contributors, all the better, you know, because we're, over time we're going to end up, you know, working on them and revising them and fine tuning them. 
until we have something that is so easy for anyone to come into the community and, and contribute something. I plus one uh, Davide ID about um, about uh, having six uh, that can provide tasks like not making the process too much uh, centralized, but we have a way to when we we know about a task we just put it in and we see how it goes. Because uh, the problem uh, on this thing is always that if you try to centralize it too much and you try to put to describe the task too much and it never works. So I think we need to have a simple process to collect. Uh, the feedback from SIG and from board member or from anybody that has an idea on what to improve. So yeah, the, I think this is one of the challenge. Yeah, and I don't know if we currently have a tagging system for issues, but I think that would be a great place to start. Also, any you know, if there's anything special people need to do on their machines, let's get that documented if we don't already. And then you know, it sounds like we'll need to get things translated. But that's not a bad thing. The more languages we have our documentation and the better. Yeah. Yep, Jack, totally agree. Speaking of localization, uh, I remember there was there were multiple people involved in doing localization work for the wiki. And the wiki isn't in the greatest of shapes, as I'm sure we're all aware. Um, so whenever we come up with a substitute for the wiki, it'd be useful to whatever that is for that to preserve the ability for folks to do translations in a workflow that is amenable to that. Um, because that's definitely something that would be valuable and it's a great avenue of contributions for folks to get started. Okay, just to give us a bit of a time warning, we're at 10 minutes and we're having really good conversations. Oh. Um, does anyone else have anything on this? If not, we'll run through the issues really quickly and the community architect update. Yeah, I don't, so want, to, I don't want to cut this off if, if there's more to talk about. No, so Amy, if I, if I can, just one comment about that. I think it's not only the localization, but also the localization platform, um, which they can you know work on, on implementing and integrating into the site. Because for Alma, we used Weblate and that worked really, really well. So maybe they could do something similar. And then that would give them, you know, not only just sitting there and translating a bunch of strings, but also kind of like integrating into the flow of the actual site or the wiki as well. So it's it's more basically more participation there and more low hanging fruit that can easily be accomplished. Yeah, and you know, the more lang like I said, the more languages we have. So if we find a system, you know, whether it's Webly or something else that different groups can use to get their own languages in the better. Yeah. So that's definitely something we should look into if we don't have something already. That feels like it will fit nicely with the uh, documentation SIG effort as some folks there will be able to really help both list out what tools are available and also gather some good requirements on what actually is needed by the folks that are trying to do this localization. Perfect. Oh, I'm glad you put in a link because I was pronouncing it totally wrong. <laughs> All right, any other comments on this before we move on and rush through the issues? Okay. Number 87, trusting the SIGs by default, secure boot. Do we have any progress on that? Uh, yeah, so we, we've got our hardware tokens ordered. Those are on their way to the data center. Um, I'll give us an update here when those are installed and we have these generated. Yay, finally. Brian, you have made me so happy. Uh, I don't have, um, I don't have firm delivery dates yet, but I would expect this to happen before the next meeting. So I'll, I'll see what we can, uh, have to report out before then. All right, I'm just bringing up the issues. Number 79, recorded historical SIG membership. It doesn't look like we have anything new there. It's five months old. So we still have the open sent to us infra issue, it looks like. Yeah. 
So Shauna, I think this might be a question for you of how do we deal with GDPR issues? Or I should say a question for you. Um, which issue is this? The... I just posted the link in the chat. Yeah, the uh, historical SIG membership. Oh, okay. Oh, that's relevant to that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can run it by the, I'm not a GDPR expert, but I can run it by people. I would imagine that if someone sends a takedown, then we can just take that information off. But I, um, I don't know. I'll ask somebody though, if that's, uh, a lot yeah. of times the, the information is that there's there there's uh, I know there's carve outs in the GDPR for um, uh, certain types of information that just can't be or that is tied to something or whatever. But uh, I'll check on it. Yeah, it's, I'd like to be able to remove people if they really want to be removed, but also don't want to remove them and then have the automation put them right back in again and think that we ignored them. Yeah, I, the trouble, you know, when you get into stuff with GDPR um, is things like, you know, you can't rewrite the history of a Git repository, for example, um, and without invalidating, because like the, the, the committer email address, the name and email address is part of the data that gets put into the hash. So you, you'd invalidate everything to, to do that. So um, there are things that, I, I believe there are basically exceptions that uh, that that's covered under, and so um, we don't I'll, purge I'll mailing lists, do we? I don't believe we do. I, I mean, we never. I've never had a request to do that. So. So if it's an opt on, opt in to be listed, would that get us an exception as opposed to automatically doing it? Possibly. I'll, um, I'll add a task to uh, for myself to ask someone who knows GDPR better than me. All right, just to keep us going, um, number seventy eight clarify CentOS or RADA policy. Do we have any updates on that? I do not, but I'm hoping to finally work on this in the next few weeks, given that I'm on a documentation band lately. Uh, so hopefully I will have something useful here for the next meeting. I'm wondering if we can close the number 71 using the new brand wordmark typeface with the old logo, being that we now have a new logo. Yeah, that seems right. If yeah. we're actually using it now. Then there's a going. lot of work to be done to actually use it now. That's you know we got to actually update websites and stuff. So, all right, do we want to keep it open while we are transitioning? Then, I, I'd be tempted not to because we're not doing any of the actual transition work, and so it would just sit in our queue as a thing that we're not doing. Yeah, do we have tickets for the actual transition work? I do not believe so. Um, no, I, I feel a, like we uh, should file those tickets in the appropriate records and then close this one. Okay. Sounds Sorry, like someone else was saying something and I... No, I just, I, I put together a, 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 like a local list on my computer of, of places where I know the logo needs to be changed. So I, I have, I can, I can start filing tickets on those things. Cool. Sorry for the puppy meltdown in the background. Um, issues on hold, getting official sent to us images into Azure, Azure. Uh, yeah, I don't have a, uh, updates on the, the images tickets for this time around. Okay. Uh, I have something here, if I may. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so um, we recently launched um, community galleries for Azure, which is, um, if you're familiar with the way that the AWS images are currently distributed, um, 
uh, as the like community AMIs. Um, so it's now possible to um, upload those images uh, into the community gallery without having to do all the legal wrangling that was necessary before. So I think that basically the path is kind of cleared now um, to have those in there. It just requires someone actually building the images um, and, and um, it's in public preview right now. So as long as someone is willing to fill out the form, which is short, um, we can get the uh, account approved to go ahead and upload the images. And then someone just needs to build the images. So I don't know if anyone wants to work at that. I included a link in the chat to the info about the community galleries uh, for everyone to take a look at, but um, there should be um, very little, if any, uh, resistance for this um, now, I would think. Yeah, so to, uh, to be clear, we're still working on this. I don't have anything to, from, from, our yeah. sin, uh, from our side to share. Uh, yeah. Again, this time around. So, but thanks for the the updates there. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to make the point that that was available now because I know that part of the issue before was you know having to deal with the whole like third party process and and support and all that stuff. And this is basically gets around all those problems. So, I also want to register my frustration with how difficult it has been to get this far. Um, this is really bad and it shouldn't be anywhere close to as bad as it is for something as simple as being able to ship Azure images or do WSL or any of these other things. I know it's not your fault, Brian, but like, this is not okay. Just, just saying. You know, we don't think it's okay either, but our lawyers are advising us otherwise, and we're not yeah. going to go against that. So yeah, it was it was it was mostly the legal stuff, Neil. I mean, I know you know that, but there's really, you know, not much that can be done there if that's not on the same page. And this, it basically provides a big loophole around that. Um, so um, it's a lot simpler to do now. But understand your frustration, but I don't think it's anyone here's fault. I'm aware of that, but. Somebody, somebody needs to know that this is that that this is a very, very unacceptable thing. Especially since there is already arrangements in place for other things from my it to go into Microsoft centers for other stuff. So clearly, it is possible. So I'm just very frustrated and upset that this is that this keeps falling apart, and it shouldn't. We're closer than we've ever been. That's yeah, true. That's what that yeah, th <laughs> this won't solve the WSL stuff, but um, you know, for what it's worth. Is the plan to have something similar for WSL down the road? Um, it's being considered right now, but there's not been any like definitive take up of that discussion yet. Um, just because this is still being rolled out. So I think the plan is probably to um, get this up and running and see how this goes before something like that is set up for WSL. Now, the, the, the big benefit of having the images in there will be to show the people, you know, in charge of the, on the WSL side that, hey, it's been successful on the community gallery side. And so there's a stronger case for doing something like that for WSL. Sounds good. All right, Neil, we have made note of your frustration. Um, I don't know all the history of what's gone on. I just peeked through some of the issues and it sounds like a lot of them are related, um, like providing the official AMIs. Um, it's at least so hopefully a, a fix for one will help fix everything. Yeah, it's at least a four year old issue um, with a lot of back and forth. And, and that's why I'm extremely frustrated because I think this is absolutely ridiculous that it's been like this for four years. Well, we will and see what we can do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think anyone's you know disagreeing with you, and we'd all like to get these closed out. Um, you know, when you have an issue that was open two years ago, nobody wants to see that. Um, so hopefully we can start moving forward with some of these and get them closed out. All right, I'm gonna skip to number four, definitive answer requested regarding logo design, because I think we can close that out. Yep. All right. Um, we've kind of discussed all the others. Let's move on to the community architect update. I know we're running late. Yeah, uh, I, we already talked about the um, board face to face when we talked about the, the dojo. Um, so the only other thing is the uh, the filling of, of True's board seat. Um, according to the records I have, uh, that cohort runs through or into August. There's no date set on the end time, but I think um, we should aim to have a new person seated in time for this meeting next month. Um, sorry, can I ask a clarifying yes, question? Is the board meeting on the 19th or the 20th? Because we have two dates in the document. We have the board meeting and dinner on the 19th up above. Oh, the face-to-face -face one. I'm sorry, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, the board meeting, uh, the actual face-to-face -face meeting is on the 20th. The 19th, uh, the evening of the 19th will be a board and contributors dinner. Okay, thanks. Um, anyway, the, uh, so the governance doc says that you have to have a 30-day period asking for nominations, which we have we have passed at this point, uh, and we have nominations. Um, I am waiting on um, confirmation from all nominees that they're uh, willing to accept the nomination. Um, and do you have a deadline on that? Well, I was gonna ask if the board wants to put a deadline on that. I'm... I'm realistically out of the office all next week, so I don't need a uh, terribly snappy response, but. But we do want whoever is elected into the position to have time to book travel. Um, so oh, right, because can... this will be, I'm sorry, this, will this meeting, will this meeting happen next month, this virtual meeting, or is it supplanted, replaced by the face-to-face? I mean, I was expecting that we would still have the virtual meeting just because yeah. not everyone can travel, but that yeah, we would you're right, you're right. largely be in person. Yeah, we should still do an official board meeting. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think a target for to vote before next uh, board meeting, like virtual board meeting is a good target. Or if, if you want to do it early, I don't know if we will have Time. I mean, if you if your goal is to bring the new person to Boston, I think it's already too late, in my opinion. Yeah. But, uh... I think um, there's, there's a good chance that um, everybody on there may already be planning on being in Boston. So um, it's uh, an issue. I'd say that's tentatively planned to vote on this in August uh, before the event. So like hold the actual vote in like the first or second week of August, maybe. Does that work? Otherwise, I was thinking give them a week and a half or at least a week to get their nominations confirmed, which yep. would bring us to the 20th. And if we had a vote by say the 27th or the 29th, just to bring it to Friday, we would have it well in advance of the next board meeting and yeah this also the, gives us time if we have any questions for the nominees yeah that can be some back and forth right the board the if we hold another virtual board meeting it would be the week before the dojo mm -hmm. just for reference So yeah, uh, if we announced it at the next meeting, 
if the person wasn't planning on waiting to be there, it would be too late for them to get there. So, so I'd say we give them to next Wednesday or Friday to confirm their nomination. Okay. Yep, sounds good. And then uh, if, if there's no objection, I would just send a confidential thing to each uh, board member. Uh, you give a rank choice and just use instant runoff. Yeah, do we have uh, various statements from folks floating around? Um, no. Yeah, like I, we have, Sean's not the only one who knows who's nominated so far. Yeah, it'd be uh, nice yeah. to have some nomination statements from folks, you know, in part so that I can tell them apart, because otherwise right. it's just names and who I recognize. Do Do we want to pass that out after the nominations are confirmed? Make sense? Yeah, and I wouldn't want to. We'll have that on hand before we make right. our votes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I have, because the the nomination form, uh, people could self nominate, but you know, could also be nominated by others. Um, and uh, that one has a, 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 one of the text fields in there is why do you think this person would, would be a good director? So I have, I have those kind of statements that other people wrote about the nominees, but I don't have necessarily um, statements written by the nominees themselves. And if don't we need those, that to make sure that one, they wanna be a nominee and two, we know what their objectives are? why they were nominated versus why they want to serve might not align. Yeah. Yep. Correct. I would like to have that at least. Okay. Maybe as I'll part ask. of them accepting, you make this request of them, Sean? Yep. Okay. So yeah, maybe in that case, give nominations as well as the statement by Friday, next Wednesday or next Friday. Um, and then looking at the calendar and when the next meeting is, have one week or two weeks for the board to vote. And we would still have that completed before the next board meeting. Does that timeline work for everybody? We're 11 minutes over. Yeah, that works um, for me. Respectful of time. All right, so we have a plan for the nominations and for the vote. Um, if there's no other issues, I apologize to everyone for us going over time and for the barking in the background. But I think we had some really good discussions and it was worth taking the extra time to finish. Yeah, no. I have one last thing. If someone is an admin on the board mailing list, can you make sure I'm still on there without me having to unsubscribe and resubscribe? I haven't received any emails from the board list since May. And I'm worried oh, I have, and I know my email is working because I get KDE email all the time. So I thought that this was a really quiet group and it's not. <laughs> and I actually sent an email. Did you guys see my email from, when was it? 12 days ago? Yes. 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 Did yes. anybody I'll... respond to it? Yes. Yes. I did not get any responses. <laughs> Have you checked your spam? Yes. Okay, because I, I found some open info mail in my spam that I was not expecting yes. either. So that's the last, why the I'm last a little email concerned. was seven days ago, and it was actually in response to your email. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, um, not sure what to do about that. Maybe just add another email address. Although it's oh, going uh, to the same inbox because it's all just aliased. Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't see any of those. <laughs> I, I think oh, I have my. admin, so I can um, check. Okay. Anything weird with the settings, but I mean, if it let your email 
get through that my, I'll, I'll check. Yes, that's it's because I checked my spam and all these other things. Okay, I, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. If but someone has server side access as well to see if there's anything in the mail logs. Yeah, we can ask you for to check the logs. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I don't want you to think that I'm not participating, but I'm not getting any comms. So um, that's not good. Yeah. We were replying to you, so that's even worse because then you feel like we're not listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I thought you thought the CentOS board uh, mailing list uh, was too quiet. I didn't understand you didn't receive anything. So I apologize. Yeah. So we will be checking. We will be checking. Uh, uh, we've also logged and everything and sorted out before before the end of the week. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Otherwise, we would have just assumed you. Yeah. The yeah, I, I was figuring you were getting the replies. Uh, that's not good. Nope. All right, I thank am. you everyone for attending and your participation today. We are 15 minutes over and we will have the office hours, I believe, next Thursday morning, and everyone can attend. Thanks all. Alrighty. Bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you.